What's up guys? So, here are five swim baits that are for you beginners out there who are just trying to get into uh, swim bait fishing. Maybe you might have seen me on the Fish North Georgia show, or maybe you might have seen some of my posts with big swim baits. I got a lot of questions and a lot of things uh, in the comments and in uh, my personal messages about using those types of things, and a lot of you guys seem to really be interested in the whole big bait phenomenon. Um, it started out on the West Coast, and it was kind of a niche thing, kind of a real hush-hush kind of thing. But eventually, as people started catching these giant bags of these giant fish and things started to expand and uh, word got out and a lot of people started making videos and things like that about it, everybody wants to pick up a swim bait now and see what all the hype is about. So, then I'm going to my raggedy backdrop over here. This is as good as it's going to get so long as it's dark and wet outside. Uh, anyway, I had some criteria that needed to be met to, uh, for these baits to make the list for all you beginners out there just getting started. A lot of people feel like they're priced out of the game when it comes to big swim baits, so that was the first thing. Number one, it had to be affordable. I'm not going to have you go out and spend two, three, four hundred dollars on one bait. Because you can definitely do that swim bait fishing. It's arguably probably the most expensive way that there is to bass fish. And, uh, I mean, even the soft baits might be twenty-five, thirty dollars or something like that, which is considered cheap <laughs> in uh, swim bait fishing. So I'm going to make it affordable for you. It's not going to be something where you're going to have to take out a loan to get a lure. Okay, uh, number two, part of the prerequisites that I had um, for a bait to make the list is that it had to be easily attainable. It had to be something that you can just go online, go on Tackle Warehouse, or go to your nearest um, big bait store or something like that and just be able to walk in and pick one up. I'm not going to have you getting on somebody's email list or waiting for a drop to happen or anything like that. It's going to be something where as soon as you watch this video, you can jump in uh, someplace online, throw it in the cart and get it. Three is that it had to not be too big. I wanted those. Uh, I wanted some baits that you guys could just take and tie onto your favorite frog rod or maybe you got an extra heavy flipping stick or something like that. You can just take those baits, put it on that rod, and throw that thing just fine where you don't need a dedicated swim bait setup because a lot of you guys just want it to be something that is just in your arsenal and not your dedicated way to fish. There's a lot of super hardcore swim bait fishermen where this is all they've done all their life and they're not going to do anything else and you'll find a lot of those dudes, oh, I sold on my conventional gear, man. I only throw swim baits and stuff like that. So it's, you don't need to do that necessarily, especially if you're just getting started. You don't need a dedicated swim bait setup. I say you buy some of these cheaper baits, something that you're not afraid to lose, and then you go out there and you fish it and see how you like it and decide whether or not this is something that you want to do and continue doing before you upgrade. No, you don't need any of these designer brands either. You don't have to have an F5 rod or a Moam stick or a low-down custom swim bait rod. You don't need any of that stuff. Just take the heaviest rod you got, assuming that it's uh, something that you would use for flipping, punching, frog fishing, some heavy bass fishing technique, and just use that rod. Take these baits, go try it out, see if you like it, move on. And uh, also, they had to be something that you could use as a confidence builder. Because a lot of these baits, uh, you don't get a whole lot of bites on them, just because of the sheer size of them, but you will get a lot of big bites. Uh, I have noticed, though, that um, after trying everything, I've tried all of them. I've tried the $500 baits, I've tried the $150 baits, I've tried the $10 baits. I've tried everything. And some of my favorite swim baits are actually some of the cheaper ones, and they produce consistent results on a day-to-day -day basis. And so these are some of the ones that I'm going to share with you. They're going to be easily accessible. They're going to be not too hard to get your hands on. They're going to not be too expensive. They're going to be pretty reliable fish catchers, something that you can build confidence on as you're using them. Because the main thing about swim bait fishing is confidence. You're going to be throwing this giant heavy bait all day long. You're going to be like, ah, I don't really believe this thing is going to catch a fish. There's no way. But uh, eventually you will get bit on a lot of these baits, I promise you. So long as you just stay consistent with them, keep throwing them, and you have a little bit of faith in it, you'll get some pretty big bites on them, I promise. So, without any further ado, I've got a couple of baits here I'm going to show you. Starting with my favorite budget glide bait. This is the Storm Arashi Glide. This is a 7-inch bait weighing in at about 3 ounces. There are some pros and cons when it comes to this lure. First of all, uh, the hardware that comes on it is not the best. It comes with a uh, snap that comes in the package with it. Don't use it, throw it away. It's not a good snap to use. Uh, I recommend a size four decoy X snap if you intend to use one. You don't have to, you can just tie direct to the line, tie here at the front, it'll work just fine. But uh, this bait is pretty sweet. Other than the hooks and uh, swapping out the hooks and the split rings and not using that snap that it comes with, it does come with a lot of positives. It has a replacement tail. I've never had to use the actual replacement tail. Um, they're actually pretty robust. In spite of being soft and pliable, it's actually 
pretty uh, durable. You're not going to have to replace it after so many fish, to be honest with you. I've got just a pile of spare tails because these ones hold up. You just never have to replace them. Also, while the paint job does get scratched up after a while, it holds up pretty all right. The paint job does hold up, so it doesn't just start flaking like how a lot of other baits do, a lot of cheap baits do. Um, and another thing about this bait is that it comes with swiveling hook hangers. That's a feature that you normally see on baits that are a lot more expensive. This bait retails for a little bit less than $40. I believe you can get it for $35, $37, something like that. So it's not incredibly expensive. So for about the same price as a 200 size S waiver, you can get one of these baits. Um, and another thing that I really like about this is that it falls a little bit faster than a lot of the other baits out there. Um, most glide baits, when you buy them, they have a pretty slow sink rate. This one's also still a slow sink, but it's a little bit faster slow sink than those other ones. So you can fish a little bit more of the water column. It's a little bit more accessible to you. Whereas if you took a little bit slower falling glide bait, you can only fish the first couple feet of the water column. This one, you can fish up to 10, 12 feet, or even a little bit deeper than that because it gets down there. It will get down and it will stay down. It doesn't blow out. That's what I appreciate about this lure. It has a pretty consistent glide the entire time. It responds well to twitches, rod jerks, cranking on the reel, and trying to get this thing to dart around and get a fish to react well. It doesn't blow out or roll over or anything like that. It's a fairly stable lure, and I really like this bait about uh, for those reasons. I've bought a bunch of other swim baits <clears throat> that are run the same size and um, weight class. And they will roll over, they blow out or something like that, and it, I just got rid of those. I don't, don't want to use them. These baits are really consistent for not a lot of money. You get a really high performing bait for a pretty low and reasonable cost. Two more and I've bought a whole bunch of different colors. This is the blueback herring. This one is, the one that I was just showing you is Oikawa. That's a Japanese color pattern. That's popular on a couple of swim baits here in America and a couple of other uh, little, so you might see it on a couple of those Japanese brand jerk baits and things like that. This is the Threadfin Shad. This is my favorite. That's my all-time favorite color in this bait. This one is, I believe this is Ghost Bluegill. That's the Ghost Bluegill color. My number two bait for our uh, beginner to get used to is this one. This is the Bait Sanity Antidote. This is a pretty sweet glide bait. Now this is a red crawl pattern, and this is something that nobody else is doing. I appreciate that about bait sanity, but uh, these ones do not come with a replacement tail. They also come with not the best hardware. Uh, they don't have swiveling hook hangers or anything like that, but what these baits do deliver is castability. They cast really, really well. They don't tumble and spin a lot in the air, which you'll get out of a lot of uh, baits with a taller body profile. They'll just catch the air in the middle. Of, they'll catch that wind in the middle of the air and start tumbling. And this bait doesn't do that. This bait actually casts pretty well. And on top of that, it has a much smoother action than a lot of other glide baits out there. Some of them look pretty mechanical. They just have a click clack, back and forth kind of gliding action. Whereas this one is pretty smooth in the water. It has a very nice, subtle glide where that doesn't have a whole lot of rocking movement. Some baits, where they have that mechanical look to them where they'll have that really jagged left and right gliding action, and then when you stop them, they kind of wobble a little bit. This bait doesn't do that. And another thing is that this is actually the cheapest hard bait on the list. It only comes in about $25, $26, so it's a very, very, very economical lure. And it comes in two sink rates, actually. It has a slow sink and a super slow sink. Now, I do recommend that you go with just a plain old slow sink, because that super slow sink is pretty much neutrally buoyant. It barely falls. That super slow sink is incredibly slow. I mean, it might as well be a topwater. It, it falls so slow. So that might be good if you're in a situation where maybe you're fishing around uh, brim beds or something like that in the summertime, you know, because the brim and, um, brim and pumpkin seeds, bluegills, ritter sunfish, all that kind of stuff, they come up and they'll spawn in just inches of water, less than a foot of water or something like that. So that might be a good situation to use the super slow sink. But the standard slow sink already falls pretty slow right off the bat. So I recommend that you use this one. Another reason why I recommend this lure is because it's a lot more user-friendly than a lot of other baits that are out there. This thing doesn't actually require you to even really be that good of a swim bait fisherman, to be honest with you. You can just take this thing, throw it out, really, and do just about any retrieve on it, and you'll probably get bit on it, to be honest with you. It's a pretty, pretty sweet lure, especially for a price of only 25 bucks, and you're not afraid to lose it. Uh, and you're not afraid to risk losing this thing by throwing it up against rocks and 
trees and docks and things like that. It's a pretty, pretty good lure, especially for only being 25 bucks. And I don't think you can find, actually I know for a fact that you can't find a better glide bait for that price, especially in this size range. Next, the Jackal Ganterelle. This bait is a pretty sweet bait. It has uh, some pretty nice feathered trebles down there at the bottom. These are stock hooks. These are not custom. It just comes like this. Super realistic bluegill profile bait. And what I appreciate about it is that it's not too tall of a bluegill profile. It's actually kind of slender in the front. And so it's easier for a fish to eat that way. Now, uh, one of the things, the cons about it, is that the hooks are a little bit thin. They will bend out eventually, especially if you cut a bunch of fish on them, they'll get worn eventually. Especially if you keep having to take a pair of pliers and bend them back into place, they'll bend out and bend back until eventually they break. So you will eventually have to replace the hooks. And another thing is that they don't seem to swim that good with regular treble hooks, they kind of have to be feathered. I don't understand why that is. Maybe it's the water displacement, I don't know. But uh, you're gonna have to replace feathered trebles with new feathered trebles if these ones get tore up. Um, what's nice about this bait though is that it's pretty durable. The paint jobs hold up. Uh, you can throw this thing up against rocks and all types of things like that without any fear of breaking it too bad or uh, having a lot of damage to the paint or anything like that. And what's also nice about this bait is that it's sort of an in-between between a glide bait and a multi-jointed bait. What I mean is that it actually has three joints in it. There's one down here by the tail, there's one here in the middle as well. Instead of your standard glide bait right down the middle or just one joint in it, where instead of gliding side to side, it actually has almost a glide but a swim at the same time. It's kind of a strange action to kind of uh, try to explain. And what's also nice about this bait too is that it has these modification rings. There's one here at the front up under the chin and there's another one here at the tail. And what those are for are for you to add accessories like maybe you want to put a spare blade on it or maybe you want to put an extra hook on it or maybe you'd like to put a weight on it somewhere. If you put a weight up here on the chin it'll sit down with the tail up like a bed, like a, a feeding bluegill. You can drop this into a bass bed, bounce it up and down and it looks like it's feeding on those eggs and those bass will be triggered to delete it. Moving into the soft baits, here is the Huddleston Deluxe 68 Special. This bait I recommend to all you guys getting started because it's a year round lure. You can use this bait spring, summer, fall, winter, it doesn't really matter. You're going to get bit on it. But what's nice about it is that it has that big 8 inch tail on it. This is Hud's, uh, Huddleston's 6 inch bait, but it has the 8 inch tail on it. What a lot of people were doing was they were taking the 6 inch, cutting the tail off of that, and then gluing the 8 inch tail on it. And then eventually Ken Huddleston just started making them that way. And this bait, has a lot of thump, lots and lots of thump. That tail puts up a lot of kick in the water and it attracts fish from a little bit farther distance. And because of that, it works well in the summertime. You'll keep hearing all the time from a lot of guys that, oh, well, uh, wedge tail baits really only work during the winter time when the water is cold, maybe a post frontal situation or something like that. But with this bait, it has enough of a thump, it has enough extra action to it where you can use it all year round. So it still works in warm water as well as cold water. Now, some of the downsides is that uh, after the first couple of fish, the paint will start to peel on it. It'll start to look a little bit ugly. It's, even if you're just bumping across the bottom on rocks and things like that, the paint will start to peel on it. But that's to be expected of a soft plastic lure. They don't last forever. We know this. Um, and another thing that might be a drawback is that this tail being big and fat as it is, if you get a tail biter, if a bass comes up and grabs the back end of it and pulls, that tail is gone. So it doesn't happen every time and it doesn't happen... Uh, often enough to make it a big problem, but it is a possibility. It, it, it can happen, so you should, you should definitely be aware of that. Uh, you probably will need to invest in some Mend It. That's a soft bait glue. If this bait gets all tore up, you can actually take that glue, put it on there and fix it, and then it'll go right back together as if it never happened. This bait comes on a couple of different ROFs, and what that stands for is rate of fall. Essentially, is just how fast it, it makes it down to the bottom. So they have a ROF 5 and a ROF 12 in the 68 Special. The ROF 5 is the bait that falls about 5 feet per 10 seconds. The ROF 12 gets down 12 feet per 10 seconds. Uh, they do have a couple of different uh, modifications too. This one is the weedless version. The hook is completely hidden in the bait. The hook is completely hidden in the bait in the weedless version. You can't see it at all, but there's a slot up here in the top, and when the fish bites it, the hook pops out. Stick the fish and get them into the boat pretty well. And you'd be surprised at how good the hookup ratio is on that thing. Not only when they eat the hood, they get the whole thing in their mouth, or they'll get it head first, and that hook will pop out. So don't be worried about the hookup ratio, about it not being exposed. It is fairly weedless. It's not as weedless as it looks. 
You will throw it in some places and it might get snagged, but normally that's because the head gets wedged in between something, not the hook itself. So the good news is you'll get on the back side of that snag. If you can just shake it, it'll fall right out. You can get it back. Next is my favorite soft bait. Everybody knows what this is. This is the Mega Bass Mag Draft. This is the Mega Bass Mag Draft 8 inch. Everybody knows this is my all time favorite soft swim bait. I love this thing to death. I never go anywhere without it. This bait is incredible. It has a really, really great swimming action. It has a little bit of side to side head roll and a little bit of tail kick at the same time as you're reeling it in. It skip cast super good. I mean, it just, it's an incredible, incredible lure. And uh, it has a swiveling hook hanger here on the bottom. If a fish grabs that hook and you uh, set the hook on him, he can roll, he can thrash, he can do whatever he wants to do and it's not coming out. And the reason why they call it the mag drop is because it has this magnet here in the belly where it actually sticks the hook to the bait and keeps it from falling out. So that harness is a pretty good thing to have. Now they have the uh, 10 inch size and they have the six inch size. And the six inch also comes in a mag drive freestyle. And that's set up for you to be able to buy your own hooks and rig it weedless if you want to. There's a way to make this eight inch weedless if you want to as well. What you do is you take a uh, X-Acto knife or something like that, or a razor blade, and you cut this harness out. Take that soft bait glue, glue it back together, and then you take uh, owner beast hook or another big swim bait hook and you can actually rig that in the nose and you can make this bait weedless. Eventually I'm going to come up with a list of really nice swim baits to use for intermediate level guys who want to take their game up to the next level after that. And then I'm probably going to go with the ultimate enthusiast baits where the things cost four or $500, the crazy expensive baits that everybody wants to see and get their hands on. And I'll show you some swim tests and things like that with those. Hopefully that helped you guys out. Leave it a like, leave it a comment. I'll see you next time. Bye.